I said I would do XP theming, and here I am doing XP theming. So, all of you know what this looks like. This. It's the green hill, the green start button, the blue taskbar. Blue title bar, white, pasty window backgrounds. This is Windows XP, or what everybody says Windows XP is. And it wasn't bad in 2002, 2003. But then it got old. And you have tons of options for configuring the taskbar in 7, but here not so much. You have blue, green, and silver. Unless you have Windows XP Media Center Edition. Then you have Shiny Royale. It's beautiful. You have very glossy, highlighty stuff. I mean, it's still white, but the highlights in the bar are toned down a bit. You have a shiny green task button, a shiny blue task bar, and you have a white notification area. It's all very well done. But note, you only have one color scheme. That's pretty much all you can get out of standard XP. Now Microsoft has made additional themes, additional style bases that you can use in Windows if you want. But they're either made for a different version of Windows or were publicized but aren't anymore and have gotten buried. But you can get these still. They're hiding about the web not too far away if you choose to look for them. And I'll post a link in the description about where you can get these. So, without further ado, Windows Embedded. This came with a Windows Embedded standard release based on the Windows XP core. It's beautiful. Uh, it's got the blue task um, window bars that look like uh, they're based heavily on the Royale theme that came with uh, Windows Media Center Edition. They're very shiny. Taskbar still has that shine to it, except you have a nice dark blue uh, notification area and a glossy blue button. It's still blue when you click it. So if you have a, an awesome blue background or uh, something along those lines that you'd like. Um, blue windows and all of that to match, but you still want to have the gloss that you would lose otherwise. Then this is the theme for you. And the default background's beautiful too. It's got all the transitions and it works very well with regular XP. Now, you have Royal Noir, which is the regular theme, except with a black taskbar, well, gray black taskbar and window bar, a dark notification area, and a dark button, but this turns green when you go over it. If you want something simple and dark, 
This is fantastic. It's subtle, but beware, this one was not completed. It was supposed to be released in Service Pack 2, I think, as a bonus, but didn't make it in, because it just wasn't completed. So you're going to see a couple things here and there where images don't have the right background shade, but it doesn't take away from the experience too much. I use this one on a regular basis. It's also Royal, which we've covered. No, we covered Royale. Oh, the same thing. Uh, there was a glitch when I was installing one of the things. I'll have to remove that at some point. And the other one is Zoom. Which looks like this. Say what you will about the Zoom player. I love this theme. Go ahead and get, get rid of that background. Get something else orange. It's got all of the highlighting of Royal Noir. Royal Noir, except it's got this nice orange taskbar button, and that goes throughout the interface as well, which is really nice. This one is finished. It's a completed theme, released as a promotion, so you're not going to get any graphical glitches. It looks fantastic especially when you have a background with some orange in it or you put orange elsewhere. This is the root copy of Chrome that I'm using for for this uh, this channel. So yeah, it takes us back to what this theme is. And I really like it. Now as far as getting these, there is a website called AskVG. And the guy who runs it is really awesome. He's posted lots of things. Uh, Vishar, I think his name is. And I hope I got that right. He's a... Uh, he's really good. He does a lot of things about going through XP and further back and further forward. And he has a page of all of the official themes that don't require patching, which are the ones that I just went over. Patching is basically allowing themes that aren't signed by Microsoft to run on your system. The ones I talked about are, they came from Microsoft, they were developed by Microsoft, but if that's not your cup of tea, you don't want to do anything with Microsoft, then go to Linux, but if you still want XP, there are patches that you can use to allow unsigned themes to run. But beware, there might be some things in there that are not safe for your computer, so just be careful and scan things. Embedded theme, download link. Zoom theme, download link. Royal Noir. Royal Noir. Pardon me. Download link. Royale slash Energy Blue slash Media Center. All the same thing. And he has a download link there too. They all look nice, they all feel nice. Um, my favorite of them all is Zune with some background customization. So, there you go. Making XP look awesome. I'll post this link in the description. Now, further tweaking. So now I can go into the amazing tool that is called Resource Hacker. Basically this will open Windows files, system files, executable data, and essentially browse that. Not like a 7-zip browses that. I should do something related to that, too. But, basically, this is how you change things like the Start button, the Click Here to Begin that pops up, the, uh, all sorts of little bits and pieces out and about. 
all of the text stuff is in string table. Specifically key 37. That is a rant for another time. Um, this I have a change to add DM. You can change it to whatever you want, but just back up anything before you do that. Because if you corrupt something and it won't load, best case scenario, you'll be able to um, run control delete and load in things through the task manager, which takes a, a little bit of skill. Worst case scenario, your computer won't boot. So yes, be very careful with any files. It gets worse when you're modifying the login screen, because then it's either you get classic login, or you get nothing. And you can't do anything with it, unless you go into a recovery mode. I also recommend you keep the original where it is, and move elsewhere your other copy. I have mine in C, Windows, INF, Explorer.exe. And there's a way you can change in the registry that too. Let me do that. Oh, by the way, keys 37 and 38 are essentially the same thing, but there's a key difference. Key 37 is the glossy key. This is your Bliss, this is your Zune, this is all of the shiny MS Styles themes. They all pull data from this. 38 is Classic. If you decide to go with Windows Classic, which I can, I'm gonna get into that when I do Windows 2000 stuff, is gonna pull data from here. So you have to change that start to whatever else if you want it to show up in Classic. Other than that, I believe all of the keys are shared. You can change all of the hover text and the pop-up window text. And really tweak it to whatever you want it to be. But with great power comes great responsibility, as in you could easily destroy your system by doing this. Especially when you get into this stuff here. Bitmaps. These are all the little images that Windows uses out and about here and there. Preview things, background things. It's not nearly as big a deal here as it is on the start screen. Where you can change background pictures and things along those lines. Not that it's not fun to mess with that stuff, but... Now this is neat. I honestly didn't know this was here. These are all of the, uh, the sidebar texts. Professional, home, embedded, and they actually have the code name Whistler sidebars in here still. That's what it was called before it was Windows XP. So anyway, that's neat. Now the registry thing I was talking about, just load up regedit, is going to be HKLM, HQ Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT. Sometimes all of this is right under NT, but in this case it's under current version. And then down to Win Logon. Just that key, you don't need to go into anything else. So you scroll through here, and you get Shell which you can change the path for. It's all relative to the Windows directory, so 
By default, it's explorer.exe. I change it to inf slash explorer.exe. So, very simple hack, and it works like a charm. I haven't had any problems with it, but if I do, I can just restore to what it was. I hope this was helpful, and I'll talk to you next time.